Hi, welcome to Fit Kids Conversations. I'm your host, David Jacobson. I'm here to talk all things health and kids fitness related with our guest for today, Brendan Sullivan of Zama. Welcome, Brendan. Hey, David. Thanks so much for having me. You bet. Good to be talking with you. Hey, can we start off just by uh, hearing a little bit about Zama, uh, elevator speech, maybe about a each story building? Yeah, perfect. Yes, yeah. So we are a, a sports psychology SaaS platform, uh, essentially working specifically with college athletes in the fitness community, uh, providing access to digital programming for athletes, um, all within kind of CBT frameworks, kind of addressing mental health challenges might be impacting your ability to kind of hit your fitness or performance goals. Uh, programming for coaches and trainers so that they can better redirect people uh, to the proper level of care when necessary. Uh, and then also access to a clinical network of uh, therapists and psychiatrists who've received our training uh, so that they're better in tune with the needs of uh, how to kind of work with the athlete community. That sounds like a pretty cool mission and uh, set of responsibilities for everybody involved there. You guys are in uh, early stages of development, I gather. Um, can you talk a little bit about where you're at, um, just in terms of um, recruiting users and and uh, other outlets that you're using to um, knit your community together? When we started last year, you can really think of it more as a services enabled business. So it was really reliant on uh, you know meeting with our clinicians to kind of um, address any concerns that you're having. Well, we're really shifting to, um, you know, we went through a Techstars program, if you're familiar with them, that kind of wrapped up in December, where we raised like a small pre-seed round. And now we're really shifting to more of a pure um, SaaS product where, um, you know, people will, you know, in September be able to download our application from the Apple or Android store uh, to kind of engage with a lot of these digital tools. And then if they'd like to meet with a clinician, uh, we would kind of connect them to uh, one of the folks in our network uh, for them to do that. So SaaS, uh, s- uh, software as a service. Yes, yes, sorry. Yes, software. That, 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 that's okay. Um, not everybody lives in Silicon Valley. Let me hear a, a little bit about your own background that, that leads you into this. Uh, I mean, obviously, uh, aside from the business motivation, uh, what in your background as an athlete, um, your own mental health journey, if you care to discuss that, um, leads you to this point. So I was formerly captain of the track team at Yale, um, and we just had lots of issues in our team, anxiety, depression, eating disorders. Um, and what you realize is just so much your ability to perform, but even just work out is really driven by psychological challenges. And so, you know, oftentimes it's hard to find um, a level of care if you're looking for it uh, or, it's, or it's unaffordable. And so those are the kind of the two things that we're really trying to solve for is one, how do you make the care a lot more affordable? And how do you ideally make it more effective? Um, you know, this is an issue that impacts all athletes, especially in the collegiate level. The NCAA has actually just passed new regulations mandating a lot of these services specifically for student athletes, uh, given all the issues that they're having. Um, and so that's why, you know, although we, you know, we have worked with folks in the fitness community, um, we really are more focused over the next kind of six months of kind of college athletics and helping address that. And so, um, you know, kicking off with a school at uh, D1 University in Texas in September, hopefully adding a couple other colleges in the meantime, um, but really kind of focused on that uh, population for the moment. Let's talk a little bit about um, some of the younger ages, too, and where, where some of these issues start and stem from. Uh, Fit Kids works primarily with uh, K-8 students, and uh, obviously some things can happen there, especially underserved communities where we're working, lots of trauma. Um, lots of uh, socioeconomic disadvantage related stress. And it doesn't obviously always get addressed. Uh, in fact, too rarely does get addressed, especially in to, uh, their later ages. So can you talk a little bit about um, where you see some of the problems stemming and what are some of the potential points for intervention where your company or others like your company can assist? Yeah, I mean, youth sports, I love what you all are doing because youth sports is a disaster in a lot of ways from a mental health standpoint. Um, you know, I, I uh, so I grew up in a military household, moved around a bunch. And what I love about sports, it's it's uh, it's a great way to kind of get involved with the community, have a, a set of friends and on top of all the kind of the life lessons that come from it. Um, you know, working out has also been shown to be one of the best ways to prevent, you know, long-term health issues, chronic issues. And it is shown to be one of the best ways to promote mental health. Um, you know, I was actually, I know this is a long answer to your question, but I was actually on Capitol Hill a few weeks ago 
with a with a bunch of gym executives from the fitness industry, and they're really promoting this thing called the Fit Bill, which would allow you to use your pre tax dollars, your FSA, your HSA, uh, for gym memberships and also youth sports because they're really trying to reinvent themselves as you know the preventative healthcare of the 21st century. Understanding that um, that kind of access to youth sports is not equal for a lot of especially marginalized communities, and really finding ways to make that more affordable for them. Um, I think athletics is similar to the military in that it can actually pull people from a lot of disenfranchised backgrounds. You know, seventy five percent of D three athletes are actually on some form of financial aid, and so I think that the more that you can start that at the younger level to get people involved, to equip parents with the resources to do that, I think is is phenomenal. And I think, especially right now, where our nation is really grappling with this mental health crisis. I really don't uh, can't think of a better way than, you know, sports is a way to help combat that. You know, it's great for your physical health. Obviously, it's great for your mental health. It's great for establishing the sense of this community. You know, for us at Zama, we're focused initially on collegiate athletes, the general fitness community. But I definitely think this is something that we can bring down to youth sports over time um, because there's a lot of opportunity to help people there, especially, you know, when you look at the mental health standpoint. From the population that you are working with, athletes that you've talked to, whether your teammates at Yale or, or others just involved in, in the growth of your business, do you get a sense that um, some of these folks are saying, I started having these problems in first grade, fourth grade, seventh grade? What what are you hearing along those lines? Yeah, I mean, I think probably not surprisingly, the biggest thing that comes up in these conversations is social media and, and just how that is having such an adverse effect on kids and their mental health. And, um, you know, people a younger at such a younger age, like there's less and less people being active. Like I remember growing up, um, I was outside all the time with my friends. Um, and like I was rarely kind of doing things inside. I think like that is starting to diminish over time. And, you know, you think of something even like, um, uh, you know, g uh, e-gaming sports and stuff. I think there actually are some benefits to that, mainly the community aspect. Um, I think especially for introverts, that's a, it's a good way of establishing a community, but I don't think anything can replace the importance of physical health and being active and just what that does for your body. Um, but I would say, kind of like the main issues for what we've heard of kind of issues that start younger, you know, social media is one, um, I think that luckily the people that were tend to work with, especially on the collegiate athlete side, they were involved with youth sports at a younger age, um, just because of, uh, they kind of had to be to kind of get in that pipeline. But what I will say is that it has become much more aggressive at a younger age where maybe the ability to do multiple sports when you're younger, that's kind of gone away. Like it's really starting to be more, you have to specialize in things. I think what you'll see with NI. IL, which is um, be able to make money off your image and likeness in college athletics, that's only going to make it even more difficult at a youth level because now there's that financial component at an even earlier age. And so I think you're going to see a lot more push for, for even more things at a youth level. So unfortunately, I think it's only going to get worse um, on, on the youth side. So it, it's great that you guys are focused on solving for it, but it's also a space of why we want to eventually help with that because um, you know, I know it's, it's, it's gone more extreme at the collegiate level. It's getting, it's getting more extreme at the high school level. And that's just going to keep trickling down now where I, I've talked to people where they have like five and six year olds going to these like elite camps. I'm like, I, I don't like, I, that just seems crazy to me. So, um, so I think that it's a space that definitely needs a lot of help. And I think it's going to require a lot of different companies, um, to do that. I'm curious about the, um, Focus of uh, the website itself, um, where some of it emphasizes elite athletes and performance elements coming out of the work you do. Um, the how much can you also orient toward people of different uh, body shapes and abilities and things like that? The main reason people go and work out now is their mental health. I think 80% of Americans. The main reasons people stop working out is also mental health, whether it's motivation, body image issues, anxiety. Um, you know, and so I think what you, what we're really trying to show is by addressing these mental health concerns, you're going to prove your ability to be consistent. And that's the same as if you're an elite D one athlete, or you're just trying to like, you know, go to the gym and maybe run a marathon, but maybe just be more fit and active. And I think the main thing is like, when you actually look at the underlying psychological challenges, they're very similar across if you're an elite athlete or not. 
even if your end goal is different. And so if we can improve your ability to, consist to be consistent, that's really what we're trying to help solve for. Um, because when you really think of performance, you know, so much of performance is also just tied to consistency. Just going to the track and showing up every day, even if you're not doing the full workout, it's it's very it's very vital to like long term performance. And so that's what we're really trying to solve for at the end of the day. Whether you're a D one athlete or gym goer, it's consistency. And so yes, you know, your goal might be different, but the actually underlying things that you're addressing uh, are pretty similar. Can you talk a little bit about um, your your own self? Um specific workouts that you do where you're at in your fitness journey today. I hate where I'm at today. Um, I need to be <laughs> a lot better about where I'm at. I actually just signed up for a, a half marathon in Baltimore in October because I'm somebody, I need a goal. Uh, it, because just working out to work out, I think like a lot of Americans, uh, is a little difficult. So, I mean, I try to do workout five times a week. Um, I've not been as good about that as late, but you know, essentially try to do some sort of cardio thing, um, usually running, potentially biking three times a week, lifting a couple of times a week. I'm also somebody just from a hobby standpoint, love doing stuff outdoors. So whether that's hiking or mountain biking, um, you know, we do try to do like some backpacking trips, um, you know, every other year. Uh, diving. So like, I, I, I just like my hobbies are outdoors and active, which is a good thing. But in terms of actually trying to maintain fitness, um, I really want to get back into at least doing five days a week and having an end goal of something like having to run a marathon uh, or sorry, a half marathon uh, is kind of what I'm, what I'm forcing myself to do. Well, that's really interesting. Um, the, the self-awareness to know that you need a goal orientation and I imagine without having used your product just yet, that um, that would be something uh, that would come in the intake form, right? As you're, as one is seeking therapy or connection with a, a therapist, introduction, et cetera. You know, when people come in, they'll be able to say, you know, my, I'm, you know, your background or an athlete or gym goer, uh, your goal, uh, run a marathon, maybe it's lose weight, workout. And then you'll put kind of what you think are sort of the main challenges. So a lot of times in the fitness world, you're looking at things like motivation, work-life balance, stress. Um, and so then based on those inputs, if you're a gym member dealing with stress, we would recommend you engage with these certain uh, digital programming modules that we're creating. And those modules are, you know, from the mental health standpoint, they're, they're built with CBT frameworks, they're science-backed. Actually, the our head of science was the former head of science at Calm, the meditation app, and she did all of their clinical studies. And so similar to what she did at Calm, we want to ensure that what we're doing is kind of in line with best practices from a science standpoint. And then on the college side, it, it doesn't even necessarily even have to always be mental health related. It could be, you know, one of the biggest issues that college athletes have is around financial worries. And so if they say that, then we would recommend one of the modules that we created around addressing financial concerns, how to think about NIL or even tax planning. You know, we're not giving investment advice, but really just making sure that they're more aware of the things that they should be thinking about as they engage with these things. And so the individual that developed those is, is a private wealth advisor. He runs an NIL collective. He's a former football player. He's actually a friend of mine from college. Um, and so, you know, we're making sure that the people that are developing these are experts in that field. Same idea with nutrition, you know, we can recommend things. So the idea is like, you're trying to meet people where they are and it doesn't always necessarily have it to be a thing where, oh, I'm depressed. I should download this. Like it can be much more proactive, much more about the fitness goals. And then there'll also be a community aspect to it where you can actually reach out and engage anonymously with other athletes that have similar issues or backgrounds of, of you. And same with on the fitness side, other fitness uh, folks kind of dealing with it. So we can really start ideally establishing more of a sense of community over time where you're not just necessarily listening to models that we created. You can actually reach out to people that have kind of had your lived experience and see what worked for them. Well, that's awesome. That's really cool. So I see where this could really apply directly to kids, especially um, with their parents, you know, leading the the way. Um, I cannot imagine an eight-year-old logging into your system and finding yeah. a therapist, but uh, a parent possibly seeking advice um, on how to handle some of the social, emotional, um, and physical hurdles, uh, mental hurdles that go along with the youth sports terrain. Totally. Yeah. So one of the things that we're actually like, I really believe in this interconnection of physical and mental health and really just the interaction of physical and health generally. Um, 
healthcare is a disaster and it's just really expensive. And actually like a lot of it's becoming subclinical uh, on the preventative side, which I think is great. And so I think one of the things that we'll do with this application is we we'll, can actually create sort of these forums and walls for therapists and fitness trainers to actually interact with each other. Um, I, I always say, you know, so I'm, I'm also an ACE CBT. People are more open with their trainer than are their doctor in a lot of ways. And so it'll give you an avenue that you can actually reach out to, to therapists to ask them general advice about stuff. And same with now you're starting a lot to see in the mental health field, the, the, uh, the realization of the importance of physical activity and how that can help with your mental health. There's studies out there now that they're more helpful than psychiatric medication in some ways. And so, but they're not experts in physical health. And so being able to connect them to the trainers could also be a powerful thing. So that's also something that we're trying to do is facilitate uh, that connection amongst um, those practitioners so that they're better in tune and more equipped to kind of do their day-to-day -day roles as well. It sounds like a very high-tech, modern version of what used to happen organically in communities when um, a child needed a support system and the people around the child recognized that and were able to provide it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think what you've seen uh, is a lot of one of our sort of support systems and sense of community has really gone away uh, over the past, you know, your, you know, technology has kind of replaced a lot of it. Um, you know, churches, you know, a lot of people used to find that going to church, YMCA centers. And so in some ways it is being replaced by these, you know, technologies. And so, you know, I am definitely someone I would always rather be in person. Um, that's just my personality. But there's also the reality that you, even more people are more comfortable doing it digitally. And so there is there a way you can at least provide this forum where um, you can develop that sense of connection. And over time, maybe that does lend itself to more of an in-person type thing. Um, to answer your question earlier about uh, the use force and parents, that's, you know, have the parents involved is, is a whole other variable. And that's why we want to make sure when we eventually go downstream to, to use sports that you know, we really build a product that um, can really cater to that parent dynamic because right now it's really more reliant on the user to kind of lead everything. And obviously that's different when you're dealing with young kids. So um, that's also something, you know, I've been thinking about and, but we would want to bring in more experts in that field to kind of help with that, just given that is such an important part of, of the equation there. So I'm just about out of uh, real questions for you, but I would love to give you the opportunity to, um, address anything that you might have hoped we'd address that we didn't get. You know, we're excited to kind of kick off with these uh, these universities this fall, and hopefully we'll keep pushing further in the collegiate market. And if there's uh, anyone that you come across or think that we can help support, then definitely let us know. And, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to start serving some more youth uh, as well in the future sometime soon. That sounds good. Let's make sure um, we get your URL out there. Uh, when is that? Yeah, so it's ZamaHealth.com. So Z is in zoo, A is in apple, M is in man, A is in apple, health.com. We're about to update the site because it doesn't kind of reflect sort of some of these products uh, that are being released in the next couple months. So that should happen in the next uh, month or so, but it's at ZamaHealth.com. Well, thanks so much for your time, Brendan. It's been wonderful talking with you. I wish you the best and success with your program and um, any way that Fit Kids can uh, fit in with that. We would love to Keep that relationship going. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me on and we'll talk soon. 